Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, my beautiful pen friends, and welcome to another video. Now, the subject uh, for today's video is about gold versus steel nibs, and whether gold nibs really do actually offer better value. So, let's roll those titles and find out. Okay, a small little disclaimer before we start the video. Um, these viewpoints are my own and they are not here really to influence your buying decision. Uh, this is really just my own sort of viewpoints which I just wanted to share in a video uh, with you guys. Some of the viewpoints may seem controversial dependent on your viewpoints on steel versus gold nibs and that's fine. You know, at the end of the day we all have different viewpoints and we should respect each other's viewpoints. So please do not uh, call me out on anything which my personal preferences may lean to a particular um, material. Okay, right, so let's talk about some steel nib and fountain pens, the pros and cons to start with. So we've got a Ranga Giant 9B, we've got a Pelican M200, a Lamy Safari, a Mayora Impromptu, and a Leonardo Opportuna Italiana Memento Zero. Uh, all these pens come in various different colors, so it's kind of, it, um, pointless to really talk about the colours. But uh, anyway, let's just talk about this Leonardo to start with. So we've got another six size um, steel nib from Bock, uh, Peter Bock from Germany. Uh, most of the nibs these days are made in Germany, um, interestingly enough. Um, but there are companies now making in-house nibs and there may be a sort of a trend, certainly in the West, to sort of go back to that sort of um, viewpoint. But anyway, we'll talk about that later on. So we've got a number six size um, steel nib from Bock, and this is a great, great nib. If you are in the market for getting a, a fountain pen, you've got a little bit of money, this Leonardo really is a fantastic buy. Likewise, the Mayora. Again, a number six size um, Yovo nib on this one. And again, it's a beautiful writing experience. Absolutely fantastic. I may prefer the Bock nibs ever so slightly for their wetness, but this is a much more consistent writer um, in terms of out of the box performance. So didn't have to do really any fine tuning to this one. Um, there was just a little bit of baby's bottom on here which I had to uh, sort of knock out. But this pen is quite old and I do know that uh, Leonardo's uh, quality assurance has improved dramatically over the years. So well, let's um, talk about the value of steel nibs. Now steel nibs can come in various um, price points and usually um, it's more of a determining factor of the materials which um, pushes the price of the pen up. That's in the size and the country location. So for example, a Ranga Giant 9B from India, 49, 160 thereabouts for a Leonardo. So that's um, some, some sort of a polar examples um, there which I can offer. So saying so a lot today. I do apologise. Um, I did say this video might get a little bit ranty, so apologies for that. Oh, that was another say. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, um, what are the main positives about um, steel nibs other than just the price? Well, they are reliable writers in general. You know, there's no getting away from it. A steel nib and fountain pen will perform just as good as a gold nib fountain pen uh, for everyday writing. Um, even modern pens like this uh, Ranga, which I've got here, which I will take off gingerly because I have been washing it out this morning. Yeah, I've got a bit of ink underneath there. A um, bit of a pressure build up for some reason. Uh, not sure what's causing that, but anyway, let's just clean that off a little bit so I don't get too inky fingers. This is a, such a surprising nib. Um, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. It offers a little bit of um, line variation. When I say little, actually quite a lot for a, a steel nib pen. And in general, it really writes flawlessly. Um, I absolutely adore this pen um, so much. It's probably my second favorite pen next to uh, the Leonardo and the Mayora, uh, which are probably, I'd say, tied for uh, first um, position in my steel nib collection. That's not to say the other pens are bad, they're not. Um, but it's just something very, reassuring about the, the Leonardo and the Mayora uh, in terms of its writing performances. I do have other steel nib um, pens in my collection. I've also got a Twisby Eco and I've also got a Leonardo Opportuna Italiana uh, Messenger. 
uh, which again, both lovely writing experiences, but I think I prefer the Memento Zero and the Mayora ever so slightly. Um, anyway, any other cons? Well, yes, um, certain inks do not react particularly well with steel nib fountain pens, um, especially if there's any sort of uh, properties within those inks which will cause corrosion to steel nibs. I've not actually had that happen to me, but it is possible that if you leave a pen unused for a long time with certain inks in there, that might have an adverse effect. So those are really the only cons which I can think of. Um, and you can also spend a lot of money on a steel nib fountain pen. And on the psychological aspect, that is a hard pill to swallow. And I'll be talking to you more about psychological aspects in this next part of the video where I talk about gold nibs. Right, so we've looked at some steel nibs. Let's have a look at some gold nibs and talk about the pros and cons of gold nibs. Well, we've got in price order, we've got a Lamy 2000 with a medium 14 karat gold nib. We've got a Santini Libra in a fine flex 18 karat gold nib. We've got a ooh, Nakaya Piccolo um, Air Cigar with a 14 karat um, fine nib. And then we've got a Leonardo Ovacina Italiana Memento Zero Grande with a 14 karat um, elastic fine nib. And they're all lovely nibs. I've got no issue with the nibs um, at all. But when we talk about in comparison to um, steel nibs, do these gold nibs really actually stand up to that of a steel nib? Yes and no. Um, and I'll, I'll give you some examples. Take this um, Santini 18 karat gold nib here, okay, with the, the fine elastic, uh, sorry, the fine flex nib, not elastic, fine flex. Um, it's a beautiful nib, absolutely fantastic. It's soft, uh, you don't need to give a lot of pressure to get um, the actual nib to perform unlike maybe with a steel nib, with the exception of one pen, I'll talk about that one in a moment. So what does gold really bring to the table? Well, if you look at uh, vintage flex nibs, for example, they really do um, offer that um, ability to get uh, a lot of characteristics to your writing um, through that flexibility. And it's something which is possible to do today, but there's a number of um, factors to why it hasn't been reproduced. Some people say that um, the recipes which were used for gold um, were uh, lost and during the time of the ballpoint and rollerball era. I think things are slowly talking, sort of turning around back to fountain pens again, um, but it will take some time again. Some people say that those recipes were lost. I don't believe that. Um, I've spoken to many people, and I think a, a much more logical reason to why uh, flexibility isn't necessarily in gold um, pens today is twofold. People, A, like a stiffer writing experience um, in general, because it's uh, for everyday writing, um, it's a lot easier to write, and there's less fatigue on the hand having, than having to sort of put down pressure and getting that line variation. You'll get also a much more consistent line from a, a stiffer nib, uh, which um, is perfectly fine, you know things change in terms of um, habits and traditions, uh, so to speak. But I think, you know, when you start looking at Instagram posts these days, uh, Spencerian calligraphy are certainly at the forefront. And this is where things like flex nibs um, start coming in. And there's no getting away from it. Gold will always offer a better experience than steel. Um, it's just physics at the end of the day. You, you just can't have a soft steel nib. You can get steel nibs which can give you some flexibility and take this uh, Ranga Giant 9B, it's a perfect example, and you'll see that uh, in a moment in the writing example. But yeah, you, you can't get away from that. The other main benefits of using gold is the fact that gold isn't corrosive. So you can use it with um, more corrosive inks. Um, iron gold inks um, generally uh, work a lot better with gold nibs as well. Um, so that's another benefit. But other than that, there really isn't so much of a benefit. Both steel nibs and gold nibs will give you, from a day-to-day -day use, an equal writing experience under normal um, writing conditions, I will hasten to add. So that's um, something to sort of take into consideration. Okay, let's move on to doing a writing sample and then I'll sum up the video next. 
Right, so for the next section, I'm going to just do this as a voiceover, purely because it will give me the opportunity to record uh, the video, then look back at it, and then sort of assess the writing, um, which I've done on the page. So the first pen we've got here is the Ranga Giant 9B. And this pen comes from India and is equipped with a Ranga fine steel nib. Now, under normal writing conditions, this pen performs absolutely fantastically, but this is where things get interesting. As you can see, when we actually give this uh, pen a little for pressure, you can squeeze out a turn, a turn of line variation, which is fantastic. Now, for all these um, tests, we are just going to write out the word test. Um, as I've just, it's a nice quick thing to write down, just enough to give, to give an impression of line variation uh, from these pens. Now I'm doing line variation tests purely because I just want to show you what steel can potentially offer in comparison to gold nibs. And I feel that um, flexibility or springiness in a pen is what um, a lot of people do desire these days. So I thought it might be a, a perfect opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> okay, next up we've got the Lamy 2000, which is equipped with a medium gold, 14 karat gold nib. And I don't know why I put a line through the 2000, but for some reason it just seemed right, even though it was wrong. <laughs> so yeah, medium gold, 14 karat gold nib. Uh, this is a hooded uh, nib design, so you won't get a ton of um, line variation out of this. But what you do get is very pleasing. And I have been reliably told that the gold nibs from Lamy are actually really underrated. So, you know, even if you've got a Lamy um, Safari, you should consider getting a gold nib, uh, potentially, if you do want to get that extra line variation and smoother writing. So that's something which I might try and do, actually, on my um, sort of customised pens, is actually see if I can find one with a gold nib uh, to put on there and just see how that actually performs. Might try that for another video later down the road. So as you can see, you can get a little bit of line variation out of this um, pen. Um, it's not a ton, but there is a little bit to be had. Okay, so next up, we are going to be looking at a Leonardo Memento Zero. And this is a absolutely phenomenal pen. Uh, for bang for buck, Leonardo on their Memento Zero and Fiore lines um, really do offer some of the best value for uh, money. I think some of the uh, price of pens out there, uh, like the Memento Zero Grande, um, and then looking into their limited edition ranges, there may be some alternative options out there which are better value, but that's not to say that they're not bad pens, they are lovely pens, it's just that they're a little bit out of my price point, even though I do own myself an Arco Brown. Uh, having said that, that was a pen which was basically on my wish list ever since getting into Fountain Pens, so um, thank you Salvatore once and once again for um, providing me that pen. Um, it's an absolute joy to use. So, yeah, as you can see, you can get a ton of uh, line variation out of this uh, medium steel um, nib from Leonardo. It's an absolutely fantastic pen. Um, so far, most of these pens do actually compare to uh, one another, with maybe the Leonardo and the Ranga offering more line variation so far. Uh, the Lamy 2000 really isn't designed to uh, put pressure on and I certainly wouldn't recommend doing it to anyone. Um, I'm just doing it for the tests, but I never use line variation in the day-to-day -day, uh, use of that pen. Anyway, next up, we're gonna go back to a gold nib pen, just to sort of go between the, the gold nibs. So we've got the Santini Libra here, and this is more like an extra fine nib. Uh, as you can see, it's a really faint line even though the, the ink in there can be quite dark. So yeah, still beautiful. Love the line variation you get out of this pen. It's uh, definitely my favorite um, gold nib fountain pen, I believe. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. So this is a fine flex nib.
and it's actually 18 karat gold. I forget to forgot to actually mention what the gold contents were in the writing example. So I'm just giving that as an audio um, audio overview, so to speak. And now just look at this. Look at that. That's beautiful. Okay, you know it doesn't offer much more than the Ranga, but what it does offer is absolutely fantastic. So we'll just finish off with some line variation and then go on to the next pen. Okay, so next up we've got the Pelican M200 which is equipped with a medium steel nib. And this was my second steel nib which I got which basically surprised me. I always felt that at the start of um, collecting fountain pens that you had to have a gold nib to get any form of um, softness but this isn't tr this really isn't true um, as you can see from the figure of eights which I will be doing in a moment you can get a ton of line variation out of this pen and it's really nice line variation too especially for a steel nib. Now Pelican interestingly do actually gold nibs vintage which you can actually change into the M200 uh, that is something which I might explore down the line um, I believe it's the 400N or 400NN uh, which gives you that ability uh, there's also some other I think they're called manifold nibs as well which give you a lot of uh, line variation which I'd like to explore going down the route or sorry, going down the road um, okay, so that was the M200, and then lastly we've got the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande with the Arco Brown. And this is equipped with a 14 karat gold elastic fine nib. And it's a lovely nib. It's a little bit too medium grade in my sort of viewpoint, and I would like it to be more the Santini sort of uh, fineness, or at least, you know, just a tad bit finer but if you look between the uh, the Lamy 2000 um, in the standard writing and the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero Grande there isn't a huge difference between that gold nib in medium and this um, gold nib in fine elastic but it does give a nice amount of um, softness and do excuse the uh, the, the poor figure eights to start with I was actually hitting the feed and that was just because I wasn't holding the pen up high enough anyway that is the pens um, for you to basically look at in comparison and now what we'll do is we will move on to the writing so the, uh, the the summary of the video so gold versus steel okay does one really offer much more of a benefit over the other well yes Gold does um, offer you that ability to get the line variation with minimal effort, but does it offer better value? That is such a hard question to answer. I think to some degrees, depending on the manufacturer, yes. Um, the Santini Libra uh, with the 18 karat gold uh, fine flex nib is absolutely wonderful that you can't get away from it. It's, it's like butter. This isn't a a jab at Leonardo, but I wouldn't necessarily say the actual Leonardo fine elastic nib is necessarily worth the money. There are certainly other nibs um, out there which cost less, which can give you that line variation. Having said that, um, if you do like Leonardo, you do like the materials, you know, don't discount it. Okay, it's um, still a good nib. It is a good nib. But in terms of value between the two, I would certainly go with the Santini um, every day, just purely because I feel it offers um, a better bang for buck. Um, but I do love Leonardo as a company. I think they produce beautiful pens. Uh, they've got absolutely uh, stellar materials. And we've also got the Cuspeed coming out soon, which is going to be an absolutely fantastic um, looking pen. It's pricey, but you know, it's um, a new material. Um, it's a quite a complicated um, technique in terms of manufacturing. So I get it. I, I do get it, but it's not necessarily going to be a pen in my radar, unfortunately, for some time. Um, anyway, yeah, that's really gold versus steel. If you've got any questions or comments or you would like to discuss um, some things in further detail, 
um, please do leave those in the comment section below. Also, do consider subscribing to the channel if you enjoy the content. Uh, if there are some things which I said in the video which uh, you feel you disagree with, that's fine. Um, please do leave a comment and you know I'll, I'll listen to your viewpoint because you know that's really what we are here to do at the end of the day is listen, listen to others. And I think this is one of the main failings as, of humanity at the moment is that we're just not listening to each um, other. So as long as you're um, polite about your response, um, you know, feel free to disagree with anything which I've said. But just know that you can get an equally good writing experience from a pen which writes for £49 um, to a pen which costs uh, £269. Okay, uh, so that's it for now. Thank you for listening. And I hope it wasn't too ranty. Till next time, stay safe and be well. Bye-bye for now.